Henderson from WCCO TV, and it's my pleasure to introduce my good friend Ron Henderson, the Fitness King, presenting Motivation, one word to help change your life. Welcome to Motivation, I'm Ron Henderson, a.k.a. the Fitness King. On today's show, I have the pleasure and the honor to have the notorious Lee Jordan. Lee Henry Jordan is an accomplished filmmaker who lives in the Twin Cities. He began his career as an extras casting representative for Walden Entertainment, where he coordinated and directed the extras prior to filming on the set for both independent and commercial productions. He began to look over Jordan and Company in 2004, where he served as a fashion consultant, created and taught fashion and image seminars, worked in commercial and independent filmmaking as an actor, model, casting director, and filmmaker. Yeah. Lee, welcome to Motivation. Well, thank you, Brian. I now, appreciate it. Now, you. first thing I'm going to ask you, what have you not done? Um, actually, that's a very good question. I, I, I try to keep myself busy you know, because I was told a long time ago that God doesn't feed anything that's standing still, so I keep moving because I like being fed. Yep. Sounds yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and Lee, I do this almost every show. Let me ask you this question. I, I like to just throw things at my guests because it kind of loosens them up just a little bit, okay? If you were to define who you are, what would you tell the average or anybody that you would meet? What would you tell them? Who is Lee Jordan? Lee Jordan is the best of both Jeff and Emily, uh, who are my parents, yeah, uh, and and the my grandparents and all the other descendants that came before me. I am the best of and the worst of all of them. The best and the worst. The okay. best and the worst of all of them. And, and understanding that helps me to understand who I am and what I need to do and what I feel is important in this world. It sounds like you had some great parents. Yes, grandparents. love them both, love them all, because they, they gave me the platform in which I stand on. Okay. And I stand on a strong foundation. That's good. That's good. Where did you grow up, Lee? Actually, I grew up in a little small town called Allenville, Arizona. That is small. Yes. That's very small. I've never heard of it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and I grew up, I tell people just to kind of give you a time reference, I grew up in the time where the place that I grew up in was known as Colored Town. Okay. So, you know, so there was separation within, yes. you know, uh, you know, within the communities. So, yes, a little small town called Allenville. You went to high school, junior high school? Actually, now, went to high school and, and elementary school in a little place called Buckeye, which is just a mile out, you know, from Allenville. Okay. That's why the separation. So there was Buckeye and Allenville. Okay. And I grew up in Allenville. All right. Now, I asked you that because I heard a rumor, and I don't know if it's true or not, that you went to school with Jacqueline's son or grandson? His grandson at East okay. High School in Phoenix, Arizona. Because we actually moved out of uh, out of uh, Buckeye, the Allenville Buckeye area, into Phoenix, and that's where I went to East High School, and that's where I met and went to school with Jack Lane's grandson. Okay, was he chip off the old block? Was he like Buff? Yes, <laughs> yes, he was. He was part of the football team and very, and very healthy, and yeah, you know, yes. So it was really kind of cool. Were you guys good friends? You know, we. Saw each other in the hall. You know, <laughs> well, still like door separation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, because I was a theater person. <laughs> right, and right. He was a jock, so mm -hmm. we, you know, there wasn't always that that communication there. Right. right. But it's getting better. You right. Know? Yeah. But uh, yes, so Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, I miss it sometimes, especially when it gets 35 below zero around here. I think. Okay. Myself, why did I leave Arizona? Right. Okay. And you know, you're you have a casting company. I know you're involved in Juneteenth. Let me ask. you, what keeps you going? Because again, like I said in the beginning of the show, first of all, you're a very hard man to reach. You're, you're, into, so, you're into so much stuff. I mean, it's like, I think I'm busy. You're like, I think way busier than me. What keeps you I going? We're, we're both kind of, we're both active. <laughs> we're both active people and that's the important part as well too. And what keeps me going is, be, uh, for me, it's defining what is uh, important to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, such as my casting company, such as, uh, as you mentioned, Juneteenth. Yes. So not only am I the uh, Midwest you know, director, but the state director for the national Juneteenth. And so that also kind of keeps hey, me. I'd be overwhelmed. Yeah. No, no, because I, I, I take every moment 
that I need to do what I need to do when I need to do it. Right, yeah. Right. So it's, it's like so right now because Juneteenth is coming up on June fifteenth. Yes. My focus is actually Juneteenth and making mm -hmm. sure that everything is is covered there. I believe very strongly in history. Yes. I believe very strongly in family history. Right. So Juneteenth really kind of helps with that as well too. So it really gives me the opportunity to kind of focus on the, some of the things that are important to me, and and from there it. That seem like it's a job or something like okay. that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And and on that note, for people that don't know anything actually, and there's a lot of people actually don't know anything about Juneteenth. Yeah. What is it specifically? How That's, did it start? Okay. Well, uh, first of all, Juneteenth is actually the oldest African American holiday centered around the uh, the freedom of slavery, or yes. the, uh, being freed from slavery. Yes. African American mm -hmm. basically from, freed from slavery, uh, and. Basically, it took two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed for the majority of the slaves in the South actually to be freed. Yes. So there's a, a little bit of a confusion there. Sure. Most people kind of figure once the Emancipation Proclamation was signed mm -hmm. that there was a majority, well, it was a, a bunch of freed slaves, but not so. It took yep. two and a half years after. And basically, that's what Juneteenth is, is that celebration of the information being shared yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so it happened throughout the month of June, and so that's why it's called Juneteenth. Yeah. It's also called Freedom Day or Independence right, right. Day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so yes, that to me is is an important part of Juneteenth. It's an important part of not just African American history, but American history. Okay. So that's the once again that's a big thing. For me. And can you tell me more about your connection with the event coming up? No. The, June, uh, the Juneteenth celebration that we have here in Minneapolis, yeah, yeah, by the way, uh, Juneteenth is celebrated across the United States. I mean, there are 43 of the 49 states that actually celebrate Juneteenth. Okay, and let me interrupt you. So, if somebody's living in Wisconsin, they, they're watching this show, where would they, how would they even find out about it if they didn't, if they didn't know? How, is there, do they have a website? How does that work? You no, know, actually there is a, uh, there is a website. Or a you can just website? actually just contact me okay. you know, on my Facebook page sure. at Lee Henry Jordan and just say, hey, I okay. want to know about Juneteenth. Right. Do you have uh, an email that people can contact you before yes. or not? Uh, actually, yes, you can email me at LeeHJordan at gmail.com. Okay. So Lee H as in Henry. Jordan at gmail.com. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if they have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer those. Okay. Yeah. So what's going on with Juneteenth in Minneapolis coming up? Uh, well, what do you have planned for us? Uh, <laughs> now, see, this is a good, uh, we do actually have a website that, you know, and like I said, if you go to my page, my, my Facebook page, right. yep. you can see the website for Juneteenth. It will be there uh, because we're still having some of the acts kind of approved and so sure, forth. Sure. Uh, but uh, we have not only stage acts, but there are vendors, there are art exhibits. Uh, we believe very strongly in uh, supporting our youth during this time period. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a, a youth program that's centered around you. And, and, and what is that about, the youth program? The youth program is actually education. Mm -hmm. It is uh, very fun activities that are centered around history and Juneteenth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Any age restrictions on that? Nope. Nope. So uh, I'm not too old? No, no. Okay. Not if you're young at heart. Okay. Uh, I'm young at heart. Folks, I'm you know I'm young at heart. Come on. <laughs> uh, and then also the important thing of it is, is that this year our theme is called Bridging the Gap. Mm -hmm. Because within, I say within every community, there's sometimes these, uh, let's say, seniors and the youth don't always see eye to eye, right? Right. Because yeah, time and space kind of gets involved in sure. there. So sure. there's there's a gap. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do at Juneteenth is actually to help bridge that gap through education, through uh, entertainment, through just coming out and 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 even though I say Juneteenth is an African American holiday. Right. It is a day that's supposed to be celebrated by anyone who actually believes in freedom. Yes. Because that is what the message of Juneteenth is. It's a day of celebration of freedom right. you know, for anyone that believes that. Okay. Now, when I listen to you talk and watch you, you seem to be very connected to this. What, <laughs> what brings out that? You just seem like it's very heartfelt for you. It Why? Is. Well... I would say that for me, one of the things that has concerned me, and, and I, I'm probably speaking out of turn here or, or a little bit more than I should, but 
let's take for instance the movie Hidden Figures. Right. Okay. The story of the uh, of these these beautiful African American scientists, right. female scientists, oh, yeah. that actually you know did these amazing things, but that information was hidden. Yes. For for so many years. Yes. So if we're talking along those levels, what else? Mm -hmm. and, and even within my own family, finding out my own family history yes. and knowing what that means, you know, to me, mm -hmm. you know, uh, has been a very eye-opening experience. So I know that if I, you know, if, 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 at this age, if I'm still finding out things, right. yes. then somebody else is still finding out things too. Yes. And so Juneteenth to me is also part of that celebration of celebrating our history. You know, right. What has been accomplished. Uh, one of the events that I'm working with is called the 1619 Project. Mm -hmm. And that deals with the fact that uh, within history, the first one of the first groups of Africans brought to the uh, like the Virginia area yes. of the United mm -hmm. States were brought here in 1619, but they were not brought here as slaves. They were brought here as indentured okay. servants. Yes. And to me, that history alone constitutes a whole path right. of education. Yeah, you know, right. because growing up, I was told you know, that we pretty much began with slavery. Yes, yes. And to that is not true. Right. So to me, once again, that's what Juneteenth is about, is about celebrating that history and actually getting the information out so that we're all on the same page. Right. So that if we're, when we move, do move forward, right. we'll all move forward together because we now have all the same information. We're you know, believing in universalism. Yeah, information you know. is power. Yes. Yeah. So yes, I, so that, that is a big part of what I do with Juneteenth. Right. Is, is I, uh, I have a gentleman that not only plays the Ab will be playing Abraham Lincoln this year, mm -hmm. but I have another gentleman who will okay. be playing Frederick Douglass. Okay. And there was a conversation between Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass that we will be doing a one-act play on that historical meeting. Yes. Do you have times of when this stuff's going to be happening? It's all on your website. It's going to be on the website. Right. I, I get to start actually putting all that together sure. now because everything's slowly but surely coming together. Sure. Let me ask you this question. Why do you think a lot of those events are actually hidden? And I'm going to ask you that because somebody told me they went to the museum in town, African yeah, Museum in town, yeah. and they said they didn't know why I wasn't mentioned in there. And it's a small bit of history only because I started the first personal training in the five-state yes. era and nobody was doing it. But nobody talks about those things. Why is it? You know, I'm not just using me as an example. No, no, why why are these things hidden? Is it intentional, or is it just we're overlooked? That's <laughs> that is a very good, very good question. Yes, uh, and and as the as a person of color, yes. even with my own cast, that's another reason right. why I, I I took control of the you know, of, of of being a part of the casting here in the Twin Cities right, yes. because I wanted to focus on people of color, right. not just African American, but other people of color because yes. if you if you're a little child out there and you're watching a commercial and you mm -hmm. don't see yourself, then you don't know that that's a possibility. Exactly. exactly. So exactly. for me, I wanted to make sure that you know that mm -hmm. as much as I possibly can, right. I want to be you know, to get as many people of color in front of that camera. Right. You know, for commercials, for films, and so right. forth. In fact, uh, there was an episode of, of the live version of All in the Family where Marla Gibbs, uh, there was an interview done with her, she played Florence. Okay. Yep, yep. She said that when, uh, even when they did the reading for, for the scripts, you yep. know, for the show, for mm -hmm. the Jeffersons, yep. she said to them, that's not how black folks talk. Right. Yeah. Right. So right. you need somebody in that room sure. you know, to be able to say, yeah, this the communication here is just a little off. Right, yeah, right. so I don't know if you if you're building this information on stereotypes or just lack of information. Sure. But either way, I'm here to say, no, this is this is the way this right, should be. Right, yeah, right, right. and to have that you know, to be able to speak in that voice with authoritarian, yeah, authoritarianism to say no because I have lived it. And I tell people all the mm -hmm. time lately, I've I've realized that. I'm a bookmark in life. Yes. I said, mm -hmm. Because at, at some point in time, in 1956, during the, the bus boycott, mm -hmm. I was bored. 
Right. So, so that means that the world was changing in 1956. So that's only 62, that 63 man, yeah. years ago. That's, so that's not that far. No. So, so not only me, but you as well. And what you say that you've done, once mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. stepping into that arena, we are still doing first. Right. And not just within the African-American community. We we're still doing first throughout the, the spectrum of people of color. Right. So we need to do more. You know, I would agree. You know, we I need would to agree. do more. We need to stand up more. We agree. need to say we're here. We're not going sure. anywhere. Sure. And furthermore, the majority of the hardworking people in America mm -hmm. are the ones who built America. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. let's give the credit where credit's due. Yeah, I agree. And and I'm I'm thinking about what you said in the beginning when you were talking about if they don't see people like them. They're never going to believe that it's even. I thought that was very, very, very powerful. Yeah. Right. Well, that's because that was my right. life. Yeah. You because know? I mean, I loved the fact that I saw people that looked like sure. me. But once again, when I saw the people that looked like me, right. the majority of them were being stereotyped into certain situations. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So oh, sure. so, but I still oh, yeah. had to go. But there's still that possibility. Sure. You know. Oh yeah. So you know, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Yes. So, oh yeah. To and me, it's interesting, important. and not to interrupt you, but it's interesting no. because I remember when I was going to school to be on the police department. Wow. And the individual that was with me, they liked that person. That person came in with yeah, African American, alcohol in their breath every morning. Yeah. Talking like you yeah, you know what I'm talking about, man. Yeah. Okay. And they liked that person. Me, I talk like I'm talking now. I'm the kind of person that would have said, excuse me, why are you beating me? I got handcuffs on. And basically, they didn't want me on the department. This was many, many years ago, and I'm, thank God I didn't get on. But that's an issue, how the kind of things that people tend to like. And I do motivation mm -hmm. because I'm trying to give people, even all people, yep. more exposure for what they're doing because I think it's important for the world to hear what you have to say. Absolutely. And, and what you mentioned as far as... Um, it's almost like what they feel, what sometimes what people feel comfortable oh, with. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but if you don't feel comfortable, if, if I make you uncomfortable, right. then you should ask yourself Figure out why. why. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Because it has nothing really to do with me. Sure. It has more to Their do with Their own insecurities. Yes. You know. yes. So where are you coming from? Right. Yeah. Right. And to me, I spent a, lo a, a few years of my life Mm -hmm. worried about what other people thought of oh, yeah. me oh, yeah. and then I started to realize is that no I just need to work on me and make sure that I'm the best person that I can be best version of you yeah. exactly. and then once I do that exactly. Exactly. yeah then the then I won't say the right people but I'll mm -hmm. just say the people that that are more positive and, and more uh, Concerned about you know others well-being right. will connect and and connect with you and right. and then together you can move forward because I agree. We're, in, we're in this boat together. I agree. You know, so let's let's row in the same direction. Right. <laughs> you know, right. And then right. once we do that, but it's also recognizing the fact that yes, I am a black man. Right. You're right. Gonna, oh, I'm yeah. a black oh, man oh, in yeah. America, yeah. And, and that is 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 a is a set of rules you right. know, in itself. Yep, and so to me, it, you know, once again, that's what Juneteenth is about. Sure. You know, it's a celebration of that history right. to say, look, yeah, you because know, it's not taught in a lot of textbooks, you yes. know, you know, uh, but it's it's something that should be known, right? Because part of my self esteem comes from the fact that I knew that one of my one, my grandfather one day said to the overseer of, of the place where the, he and my and my grandmother and, and my and sure. my grandmother were all working, when my grandmother wasn't feeling well, my grandfather who was only like five foot seven, okay. <laughs> five right. foot eight, yeah, you know, the man had to be at least six feet tall, and he told him that look, I told you my wife isn't feeling well, and she's not going out there to work. Right, right. You know, so he just, you know, to be able to have that sort of energy sure. to say, look, I'm taking care of my family yeah. first. Oh, yeah. you know? oh, yeah. so, so knowing those stories right. gave me some of the you know, oh, yeah. courage that I needed to kind of stand firm for oh, who yeah. I was and oh, what yeah. I believed. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. I like that. And you keep talking about standing firm. I did a small keynote last Saturday, mm -hmm. and it was called, What Will You Stand For? Ah. And 
in a nutshell, to summarize it, I was telling people, what are you willing to stand for? And I said, maybe you don't have a set of particular skills that I have, because I physically stand up for yeah. people at different times of my life. But are you the person that sits with the camera and goes, oh, oh my God, I can't believe what they're doing. And you're filming it and sending it on Facebook. Are you the person that gets involved standing up for something? And you made a decision to stand up when you started Jordan casting. Yeah. Give us a story of that. When did you start officially and how? Just oh. share it with us. Well, first of all, share like your said, journey. Share my journey. <laughs> first of all, uh, I started with Walden's, uh, uh, Walden Entertainment, which is a casting agency here, and they focused on extras casting. Basically, what extras casting is is the background for, let's say, for instance, if you're doing a scene, a restaurant scene, right? Yeah, and you have your two main characters up front, yep. but you also need those people in the back having dinner and so forth and right, so on. Right. That's basically, that's background casting, mm -hmm. so that's what I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so from there, yeah, uh, I, yeah, that happens not only in films, but also in commercials. So that's the focus of the company itself. Mm -hmm. So from there, uh, after doing it for my, you know, myself and being background, yep. I kind of stepped from in front of the okay. camera <laughs> to behind the camera right. to really kind of help more people uh, of color and youth and anyone else that's interested in being in this, you know, this business. Right. What do you need to do to do that? How right. do you get from I want to be an actor sure. to actually being in front of the camera? Right. What that takes. How does how does it start? How does it start? See, I'm trying to. I, <laughs> see, I, I see all these commercials for all these people that are my age, uh, right? For, what is it for a line? And I'm uh, like, I want to be in that commercial, that. <laughs> but nobody connects you. I used to do more work, let's say, 30 years ago. I'd get stuff, military films, HD, HDTV, and different things. Mm -hmm. And now I, I don't even know where to go. I don't even know what's the best organization where you can, you know. So explain that for my audience as well. Well, first of all, the way my company is set up right. is that you fill out a free profile. Yeah. And what that is basically is your, your uh, a current headshot, uh, email address, mm -hmm. uh, any work that you have done. You fill out, you know. Uh, okay. Like and where do they go for that? As well, uh, JordanZestersCasting. Dot com. You know. Okay. Uh, and once again, if you have any questions, there's a Facebook page on Jordan's Zestris Casting or Lee okay. H Jordan or Lee Henry Jordan. Okay. Either one. Okay. So they put a, be a beautiful picture of my mug. That's yeah. what they put on. That's yeah. a joke. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah no, it's great. Yeah, uh, but then, like I said, then emails will come to you about projects coming on. Yeah, so let's say, for instance, right now I'm working on a project on my own personally uh, with some other friends of mine. We're doing uh, a, a historical show, right? And so I'm looking for African American men, women, children, Caucasian males, females, all for this historical piece. Mm -hmm. So I'll put that information out through the website to yep. say these are the dates that the, you know the, the shoot is. Mm -hmm. This is what is, uh, it pays if it is a pay to the some yep. positions are mm -hmm. paid, some are not paid. Mm -hmm. And then you say, oh well, I'm available on Thursday. I, I could probably do that. And then you submit. And once you submit, mm -hmm. then I send that information to the the casting director yep. and say, hey, these are the people that are interested in this project. Who do you choose? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it kind of helps to streamline the system a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so to me, that that's a big part of what I do is to is to help kind of streamline that information so that most people out there, the average person, can say, I can fill out a profile. Okay. Okay. Know, okay. So. But but you got you got my viewers watching motivation, and some of them are sitting there. They're saying, okay, I want to do that, but Lee, I don't have a professional photo. What do you? And, what do they do then? And at this yeah. point in time, because you are starting at the beginning mm -hmm. portions, it doesn't need to be that eight by ten glossy. It just needs to be a current picture that actually shows, you know, as they say, a headshot. So right. from here up, yeah. Uh, and in some cases, I need a full shot because right. sometimes someone will say, I need to see all of them. So I'll say, hey, use your phone because everyone pretty much has a phone oh, these yeah. days. Oh, yeah. And because the, the cameras on most of those phones are pretty decent you can take a decent picture. I agree. And for right now, that's where you need to start. Right. Just start with something as simple as that. Yep. And then from there, little by little, as you are building up your career, because some people want to do this as a hobby. Right, right. And some people want to do this mm -hmm. as a living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And either way, Jordan Dexter's casting can help you. If you want to do it as a hobby, yeah, great. You know, I just helped shoot a, uh, a World War I film. You know, where I had a group of soldiers, uh, a gentleman yep. being soldiers, you know, uh, pretending to be soldiers. They had the 
the greatest time they kept telling me, Jordan, we got to dress up, we got to like, like run around and do so. Yeah. So it was giving them that opportunity to have fun with it, you know. Yep. Uh, so like I said, if you're, if you're just beginning, you know, or if you want to do this a little, still a good place to start because you need to start working on your resume. Right. You know? right. So little by little, so you only got one or two things on your resume right now. Right. But if you start getting those emails, you can say, well, hey, I can do that because I'm still missing a few things here and there. Right. So you start to fill in that sure. resume, and then from mm -hmm. there, then we can actually get you set up to the point where you can talk to some of the other major casting agencies here in the Twin Cities to do right. all the union work and so forth. And so, right. on. so it's a it's a stepping stone towards a bigger goal, and, and that's what I do. And Lee, and what would you tell an individual that's sitting there watching, and they're saying, "I want to do that," but they're saying. But brother, I got to get paid. What would you tell them? I mean, I know what I would tell them. Yeah. What would you tell them? I would say they have no experience by the time. Brother, no I want to get paid. You want to get paid? Okay. Yeah. What would you tell them? I would say I'm telling them like I tell everyone else. You've got to start somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and in some cases, yes, some of the positions we have are not right. paid. Right. Yeah. But you're building a you resume. Can, you're building See? a resume. That's what I want you to talk about for you, people that you. Yeah. Yeah. And you and you're building up your own expertise as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so not only your resume but your own expertise. Yeah, you know, to the point where, who knows? There's another category that we, we didn't talk about, and mm -hmm. that's what is known as the principal extra. Okay. And what that is, that's usually where the money comes in because mm -hmm. now you have a speaking part. Okay. Yeah. So you know, so for your move from background right. to to the point now, the two people that is, like I just mentioned before that are having dinner. Yep. You are now that waiter that comes up and says, can I take your order? Yep. Mm -hmm. And because you know, you you're now have a speaking role, yep. you now actually get moved up as far as dollars. If, if it is a paying gig. Right, if it is. If, if it it's is. a paying mm -hmm. gig, you get moved up. So there are a lot of rules and regulations, but if you don't get into the pool, mm -hmm. <laughs> you yep. know, then you don't realize you First of all, that you got to start swimming yourself. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. So then, once you start swimming, then you start to realize, well, maybe I should go a couple more laps, or right. you know, yeah, right. so that I can really kind of build up my endurance. And, sure. you know, so it's it's like anything else. You've oh, got yeah. to start somewhere. Right. Yeah. So why not right. start with someone that actually is willing to take that time to help you to understand what all this is about, right. so that you can move forward with your dreams and your goals. Right. I like it. In thirty seconds, in closing. What would you tell a potential model or actress that's thinking about maybe working for your agency or coming? What would you tell them? I would say nothing beats a failure but a try. Mm -hmm. So why not just, because you, you never know. I had a cousin of mine who actually was on a movie set once mm -hmm. and said he never wants to do it again. Okay. <laughs> because it takes, it takes a very unique Type of person. Yes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So so yes. So why not actually maybe find it out early? So right. now you can go on and be an accountant if you want right. because you've got that acting bug out your right. system. Right. Right. So you can move forward with something right. else. But right. still, once again, you need to start somewhere. Exactly. Exactly. Folks, you've been watching Motivation with my guest Lee Henry Jordan yes. of Jordan Casting and the I, I call it Juneteenth Juneteen celebration. The celebration. It's been a pleasure no, having you on, no, talking about pleasure. motivation, talking Thank about you. Juneteenth, talking about Jordan casting. If you want to be a movie star, if you want to be like me, a movie star. I'm not there a movie star. <laughs> we, we run a movie to set together. Okay, yeah, yes. we run a movie set together. Yes. yes, yes. But if you are interested, make sure you go to his website yep. on Facebook. Lee Henry Jordan. Lee Henry Jordan. Folks, in all that you do, I want you to stay fit, stay blessed, and stay motivated. We're going to see you next time. That's right, folks, on Motivation. Good Perfect. job. Thank you, good job. No. <laughs>